Hello, and in this video I'm going to go through all of the remaining minor characters and enter the Gungeon that I could find. My basic qualifications for this are that they have to either be mentioned in more than one item description, or have an actual name that's not a direct copy of whatever the item's referencing, if it's referencing anything. This is essentially a sequel to the first one of these that I made, and I hope you enjoy it. The first and most lore-relevant character would have to be a character known only as the Frost Giant. He's mentioned in the description of only two items, but I find him interesting nonetheless, considering that this character, who's not even named, is entirely responsible for the cold and icy theme of the Hollow. It's stated that long ago he ruled the quote, icy depths. Since none of the depths of the Gungeon but the Hollow are remotely icy, I think it's a fair bet that that's what it means. Before the Frost Giant's occupation, the Hollow was presumably a set of winding catacombs filled with naught but dust and skulls. Cold, probably sure, but nowhere near as cold as it would become. The Frost Giant's reign, however, was cut short when his heart was literally torn out of his chest. It's implied that this was done by an ambitious monster hunter who came to the Gungeon seeking the Frost Giant as a prize. The items relevant to the Frost Giant are no real surprise. The gun known as the Frost Giant, which was his weapon, and the Heart of Ice, which is the heart that used to belong to him before some nice fellow borrowed it. Next up is a character only talked about in an unused item description named Blast Eddie. Eddie was a prominent Gungeoneer in an age long gone. Outside of this, not much is really known about him other than that he used the Q-Bullets to his advantage. Apparently, he used them in a famous competition with his nameless rival. This competition? One of Winchester's games, of course. He won. This next guy is kinda breaking my rules a bit, but I figured it was worth mentioning. The Drunkard has a quote that I'm not 100% sure how to trigger, but I've heard through whispers on the wind that it has something to do with dying with the clone item. The quote reads as follows, and describes another former Gungeoneer of legend. Have you heard of the Gungeoneer Theodore of Rass? He was known for his alacrity, but faltered with the eyes of the galaxy upon him. So beloved was he that he was granted a second chance, a new life with which to challenge the Gungeon. And yet again he fell. Today I'm drinking to him. Poor bastard. This line references the 2018 Summer Games Done Quick speedrunning event where a speedrunner named Teddy Rass was given the unenviable task of running Gungeon. Gungeon wasn't playing fair, and he died in the forge, but he was given a second chance to try and complete the game, which ended similarly with him dying once more in the forge, except this time to the dragon, instead of in an enemy room. All things considered, I'm comfortable calling Theodore of Rass a character in his own right, even if he exists to reference a real person. Wouldn't be the first time in the Gungeon. Here we have two unnamed characters and their feud within the Gungeon. I'll tell you their short and bloody tale. It's a well-established fact that conventional magic falters within the Gungeon, being quite unreliable, not something to bet your life on. With this in mind, a nameless magic user faced with the eternal predicament of low ammunition took initiative and used tape to shamble some of their largely useless wands into a ramshackle firearm we know today as the Bundle of Wands. The magic user continued their journey through the Gungeon, and while their exploits are largely unknown, they definitely killed a group of apprentice Gungerers with their now signature makeshift weapon. It's easy to forget, however, that apprentice Gungerers are not nearly alone. Apprentices have masters. The master of those particular apprentices sought revenge on the Gungeoneer who had slain them, and sought to create a weapon to deliver his vengeance. Taking his staff to make the stock of the gun, he enchanted every piece of metal three times before finally putting his creation together. And so, with this weapon, he took revenge on they who had killed his students. While the Gungeoneer almost definitely died, the fate of the Gungerer remains unknown. I got a bit too into weaving item descriptions into a proper story, but everything I've said here is canon. The only problem is it's not directly confirmed that the magic user who created the Bundle of Wands was also the one slain for using it against the Apprentice Gungerers. There's not much here at all, actually, so it's really one of those things that's left up to user interpretation. I choose to believe that they are the same person because it makes a nice tale. You could believe that they're two different people. They're both equally possible. The final character I want to talk about in this video is probably the most popular, the aimless gun knight, Cormorant. Cormorant was a knight of guns who approached the Gungeon not for its riches, not to change his past, but out of a genuine curiosity about what lay within its stony walls. He was doomed from the start. 
He was a formidable gunslinger with skills such that he never needed to reload any of his weapons. Using this power and his other talents, he made his way through the first three chambers with great ease. However, his skill would inevitably lead to his downfall. In the Hollow, overconfident from all the easy victories before, Cormoran lost concentration and sustained a grievous wound. After making his way to the forge, Cormorant chose to remove his helmet. Was it to rest? View something better? It's never stated. What is stated was that when he turned around to collect his helmet once more, it was gone. And at its place sat a calling card from everyone's favourite rat. And so Cormorant made it all the way to the beast of the forge, the mighty ancient Sheldrake that guards the gun that can kill the past. And it was here that he perished. Weakened by injury and the theft of his helmet, he had no hope to best the beast. Cormorant's armor remains in the gungeon, and if one should wear it all, they're able to gain Cormorant's great power. But not his skill, sadly. Okay, well, the video's not quite over yet. There are a couple cut items I wanted to go over here that reference characters I discussed in the last Misk Lore Characters video. It's nothing super new or revolutionary, but I wanted to complete the collection, so to speak. A cut item known as the Thunderbolt doesn't explicitly state a connection to any of the characters from the first video, but if you've seen that video, it's painfully obvious. Supposedly, the item contains a famous Gungeoneer's soul. The famous Gungeoneer is almost definitely Alistair the Thunderbolt, former captain of the Void Corps. There's also a cut item called the Monster Ball that references Emmett Calx, the renowned beast hunter. According to Gungeon legend, Calx, in a display of his typical brand of madness, threw one of these monster-catching balls at the Beholster. It didn't work. It apparently caused the Beholster to blink, however, which is the only reason Calx lived to tell the tale. For all intents and purposes, this is where the video ends, see ya, bye bye and all that. But I thought I'd take some time to recommend to you someone else in the Gungeon community who I think is absolutely brilliant at what they do. That being Titanium Grunt 7 on DeviantArt. They haven't asked me to do this or anything, I just really love their work. They're an extremely talented pixel artist and animator who does a lot of brilliant fan stuff for Enter the Gungeon and the Binding of Isaac communities, mainly in the way of extremely creative and interesting custom enemy ideas and designs. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I definitely recommend giving them a visit. Anyways, now the video ends for real. See ya!